margarine. It's marketed as a health food, but it probably isn't. At least, not in the form that it's sold today, when it was first developed. In the 1800s, it was a product chock full of margaric acid, which gave margarine its name. Margaric acid is the colloquial name for hepatodecanoic acid, a saturated fatty acid which is 17 carbons long. Today, the product we know as margarine has no margaric acid. It's way too expensive. Pity, it seems margaric acid helps correct some of the metabolic abnormalities associated with metabolic syndrome. In dolphins, a group of researchers from the U.S. Navy Marine Mammal Program in San Diego believe these fishes could teach us a thing or two about how to combat metabolic syndrome in human beings. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we find out what Flipper and company can teach us about metabolic syndrome. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Okay, before I continue, dolphins are not fishes. They live among the fish, they eat fish, but they're mammals, just like you and me. And what's more, they're smart mammals. That is, they have big brains, and a big brain brings metabolic challenges. A big brain uses lots and lots of energy. To keep it fueled up requires some chemical tweaks. One of the tweaks used to keep brains adequately fueled is insulin resistance. It's an effective strategy in moderation, but it can lead to elevated levels of insulin, and this leads to trouble. So what causes elevated levels of insulin in dolphins? While dolphins don't seem to suffer from this condition, even though they're designed for insulin resistance. When the research team compared the health profiles of two populations of dolphins, they found dolphins living among humans tended to have higher insulin levels. Their sugar levels were fine, so they didn't have diabetes, but their triglyceride levels were sky high, and so were their iron levels. Hmm. So, just like humans, high insulin levels in dolphins creates bad body chemistry. Now, dolphins living in captivity don't eat pizza, pasta, or Twinkies. They eat fish. So, a high-carb diet can't be behind their insulin resistance. What is? Well, the fundamental difference between Wild dolphins and captive dolphins is wild dolphins have to do their own fishing. Captive dolphins get fish dinners served to them, with the option of catching a fish or two for fun. Are they eating too much and moving too little? Mindful of the fact that being served regular fishy dinners could lead to overindulgence, Feeding time is highly regulated. Individual animals receive carefully calculated rations based on their age, size, and level of physical activity. So it's unlikely that they're eating too much and moving too little. What is different is the type of fish they're eating. The captive fish dinners come from around the globe. Captive dolphins enjoy kaplan from Canada and Iceland, herring, mackerel, and squid. Wild dolphins get what's going
growing, which is typically Atlantic croaker, pinfish, or striped mullet. Could this matter? The team fished for answers. Looking for cues, they analyzed the fatty acid profiles of the dolphins with high insulin levels and compared them to animals with low insulin levels. Serum hepatodecanoic acid levels were different. Next, they looked at hepatodecanoic acid levels in different fish species. Kaplan had none. Pinfish and mullet had plenty. Could dietary hepatodecanoic acid or magaric acid levels be responsible for metabolic syndrome in dolphins? Hmm. The team decided to put a few of their metabolically troubled charges on diet. No, they didn't get salad. Fish dinners were still served, but the fish that was served was local. Kaplan was replaced with pinfish and mullet, effectively increasing the dietary hepatodecanoic acid levels in the dolphins from 400 to 1,700 milligrams per day. 24 weeks later, the metabolic profiles of the dieting dolphins were significantly better. Could eating more hepatodecanoic acid help humans with metabolic problems? Epidemiological studies suggest higher levels of pentadecanoic acid, which has got 15 carbons, and hepatodecanoic acid, the 17 carbon saturated fatty acid, are associated with lower risks of diabetes. So maybe it's time to eat more margaric acid. Unfortunately, you won't find it in margarine. It is found in dairy products and selected fish species. One way to raise your C17 saturated fatty acid levels is to eat more dairy products, but you must eat the fat. The team tested the hepatodecanoic acid or margaric acid levels in dietary products purchased from a local supermarket. They found butter contained 425 milligrams per 100 grams. In milk, full cream milk had 19 milligrams per 100 grams. Low fat milk, 10 milligrams per 100 grams. And skim milk had zero. High insulin levels underpin most lifestyle diseases. The easiest way to rein in your insulin levels is to do a little candy flossing. Begin by cutting the carbs and adding protein, fat and fiber. Learn more about the candy floss system by downloading our special report and begin the journey today to better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry so you optimize your health and the health of your family? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know a human battling metabolic syndrome. Share this video with them so they can learn from the fishes and include more margaric acid in their diet. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.